Hello everyone. Uh, today I am here to talk about dealing with Prithvi, where you made science. So before we start our conversation on Prithvi, first let me take this opportunity to thank the people who have made this possible. So thank you first to the Indian Yoga Association for giving us this opportunity to share this. Thank you to the International Day of Yoga uh, in 2023, again, to give us this opportunity to share this. Uh, thank you to Swast Yoga Institute, uh, where I work as a faculty member. And lastly, thank you to Swast Foundation. Uh, Swast Yoga Institute is a program of uh, Swast Foundation, which has given us the opportunity to create this uh, program on sustained well -being. So let's start with a short prayer. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Tarvavahai Ejashvinavaditamastu Navedveshavahai Om Shanti 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 Before we start, let's give our salutations to the Gurus. For me, these three Gurus, Swami Vivekanandji, Sri Aurobindo Ji, and Hanumanji have always been there as a guide. They have supported me in activating the inner Guru and taking me forward on this journey. So who am I? Who is Sanjeev Kapila? It's a quick introduction. So I did my B.Tech in Computer Science uh, from IIT Bombay in 2001. Uh, post that, I've done my MSc in Yoga from Estrasa University, an MD in Alternate Medicine. I have done a certification as a uh, professional coach from the International Coaching Federation. Uh, my Somatic Experiencing Professional Certificate uh, is a three-year program on somatic experiencing, that is the experience of body uh, towards healing. I spent six and a half years initially uh, at McKinsey & Company uh, as a healthcare and the development sector expert. So from 2001 to 2008, after which I quit McKinsey to start uh, SWAS Foundation in 2008. Uh, and since then have been uh, building SWAS Foundation with the vision of health and joy for all. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing my PhD at IIT Bombay in the electrical engineering department. And I also work as a faculty at First Yoga Institute, which is a program of First Foundation focused primarily on uh, bringing sustained well-being through yoga uh, to the world. So our goal here is to integrate yoga and science. As you can see, we've done both Indian traditional systems as well as uh, modern science. And my goal is to bring these together uh, into one. And we'll see that a little bit through the presentation today. So today we'll talk of Prithvi, uh, healing with Prithvi specifically. As we know in Sankhya and Yoga, the whole world, including us, the universe, is made up of these five elements, which is Prithvi, Jal, Agni, Vayu, and Akash, or as we say, earth, water, fire, air, and space. So Prithvi is the earth element. And since we are made of it, made of, of, of it, both the Indian traditional systems have come around to the benefits of Prithvi in healing. That is something we have known for thousands of years now and have included it in various healing practices of uh, Ayurveda as well as yoga. More recently, naturopathy also discovered this a couple of hundred years ago and has been doing multiple processes. With it. But today what I'll talk about the healing process of Prithvi is a more recent one. Uh, which was discovered probably just 20 years ago and has uh, seen quite significant benefits. So I'll talk about healing with Prithvi in these four parts. First, just describe the process, the simple process that uh, needs to be done that anybody can do anywhere. 
um, then what diseases or pathologies it's found to heal already through the various clinical trials. Uh, then get into a little bit of how this is happening. So what part of our system does this specific heal? So how does this really work? And then finally, uh, getting more specific into how does it work, the mechanics of it. There it's not fully clear how does the entire system work, but at least the beginning of uh, what has been discussed. And in the end, I'll summarize it for it. So let's get going. Let's start with just understanding what the process is, uh, the healing process, the modern day process. And this process is known more as earthing and sometimes as uh, grounding as well, but more commonly as earthing. And this is a process to connect with Prithvi, Prithvi being literally uh, the Prithvi earth. And what does that mean? Connect. So connect with it electrically. So earthing is a process to bring our body at the same electric potential as the earth. And this can be done in either of these two ways. First, bringing our skin in direct contact with earth. And that could be through soil, plants, sand, that electric potential. It's not necessarily earth, but the electric potential of the earth. Or it could be done through connecting a conductor or a conducting medium with earth. And here we see that through this, what is known as a grounding mat, we connect to the earthing socket, uh, earthing point in our electrical setup. And this is a conducting material. The mat is made up of a conducting material and we place our bare feet on it. So this also connects us with the earth in this sense, in the earthing sense. So here there is no physical earth as you can see on the right hand side, but there is the earthing potential, the potential, the electric potential of the earth. So why do this, right? At a very basic level, we know that our body is also an electrical system. And now it is without a reference. So what do I mean by that? That every electrical system needs a reference voltage, a ground. This is typically the third pin in our socket uh, that we see. We have three pin sockets, especially in India outside as well. The third pin is a ground. This is a simple pin which is connected via wire to the ground, the earth. And that is because earth is known as a infinite source uh, of yeah, electron. So it remains at the same potential, which we use as a reference potential. We call that the zero potential, the shunya. So we connect. Uh, every system needs that. So now you have a laptop. You need that. The third pin will go. That gives a reference to the, uh, the, the laptop of the other two pins on what potential to pin. And that makes the system uh, stable. But what, what we have seen is that our electrical system is no longer grounded. It doesn't have a reference. We have lost our direct contact with Earth. Why do I say lost? Because earlier we did have. About 1960s is when insulated or rubber footwear. Rubber is a very strong insulator. That started coming into place instead of leather. Leather is animal skin, which is also uh, semiconducting, just like our skin. Uh, but this basically started happening around 1960s. And as a result, we didn't uh, stay in touch with the earth. Earlier, if you would wear pure leather footwear, then we would be connected to earth as we walk on. Today, we sleep on high beds, uh, not on the ground as earlier we would sleep uh, in contact. Again, you would sleep on animal skin placed on ground and that would keep us connected. And our current floors are made up of like tiles, vitrified tiles, etc. are made up of insulating material. And so, there, even if we walk bare feet on our tiles, it does not do the same thing. It does not connect us with the earth. So as a result, our connection with the earth, our reference voltage has now no longer there. Our electrical system, which is, we'll see, our nervous system, which plays a significant part, is gotten disconnected from its reference. And so it's operating in a slightly different way. One of the things, this is a correlation, not a causation from a scientific standpoint, but uh, this plot, basically one shows the growth of shoes from 1960s, as we saw insulated shoes, how they have grown and diabetes as well. And some of the other, uh, uh, other chronic diseases have shown a similar trajectory in terms of growth incidence, the number of people uh, that are continuously getting diabetes. So, so there is this just correlation. This is not causation. So there's direct cause of whether this is really resulting in that is not. 
but a correlation can definitely be established between these two parameters. And this is important again because the evolution, our evolution as a human being, our physical evolution has happened where we have been in touch with earth. We would walk bare feet and then slowly leather shoes. We see that with other animals also, other biological uh, entities as well, that they have evolved being in contact with the earth, with Prithvi. But our contact, and so have we, so our entire system is optimized to that uh, potential, to be at that potential. But what has happened, as you can see, uh, because of, particularly because of the insulated shoes, our contact has gone. And sometimes I'm sure it would be years now before we actually directly come in contact with Earth. Because now whenever we go, even if we are going in a park, in nature, we are going for a trek, we would wear these shoes, where our contact with, a uh, direct contact with Earth will, will be very limited. And we'll see how this plays out now. So this is just the basic uh, process of connecting with Prithvi today and how it heals uh, is what we will see now. So let's go to the second part saying what all has it found to heal. So once this came up uh, in about 20 years ago, somebody thought of this, then a lot of clinical trials started happening to saying what all does it affect. Uh, anecdotally, there is a lot more evidence of what it affects, but uh, here I'm just presenting uh, some papers which have shown what kind of things it affects. So this is firstly a paper from the Alternative Complementary Medicine 2004. This shows the effect on cortisol levels. Uh, so cortisol uh, is basically a hormone which is also known as a stress hormone. So this basically fluctuates throughout the day uh, in our uh, body, giving us different levels of activity. And it's very important again uh, to uh, as a measure of the level of stress in our system. So whenever we feel stress or our fight or flight response is triggered, then, and we'll see what that is a little bit more in detail, then the cortisol level goes up in our uh, blood. And so this is what they found, that there are 12 subjects in this. This was the initial cortisol level. So each line in this is a cortisol level during the whole day for one individual. So we see 12 lines here, and we see how randomly it is varying. Right? It's just, for some it's peaking, it's peaking around the same time here. 8 a.m., but it's fluctuating, uh, particularly in the night, it's fluctuating uh, quite a bit, which is an indicator of stress. Now, after sleeping earth for six weeks, so what does this mean? For six weeks, uh, this grounding mat was placed at the feet of the earth, uh, feet of the uh, people, and they slept uh, grounded. And this is the level that started happening. This is again the same 12 subjects, their cortisol levels over the 24 hour period. So we see that it's still peaking at around that 8 a.m., but the levels in the others are more regulated. So this is when it is supposed to peak. This is the activity time, as we know, in our dincharya, uh, that 4 a.m. to noon. This is when we are most active, and this is the uh, profile that we start seeing. This is just a normal profile that they have found. This is just for reference, which is what we see start seeing here, where between 4 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, there is some activity and then after that it starts uh, dropping. And this is what just six weeks of earthing um, has done for people, just regulated their cortisol levels. And improved sleep, cortisol levels has impact on many stress-borne diseases, which is all of the chronic diseases, hypertension, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, as we know them today. Right. So this was the first impact that it has had. The second uh, study, uh, which is around inflammation. So we see that this is also, again, reduced inflammation. This is a very interesting paper uh, uh, where medical thermography was used. And these are case studies. The, the author has presented case studies, a clinician. So he's just presented case studies. And these are the kinds of case studies that have been presented. This is for about 20 people. Uh, this is what happened after sleeping earth for four nights. So this is an image before. You can see these yellow, red. These are hot spots. These are where inflammation is high. Uh, and this is before what we see here and down we see after. So we can see how inflammation has significantly come down. And along with that, pain also comes down. Uh, in this scenario, we see again here the extent of inflammation, the redness that's there. There are these other patches also in the feet. And all of them, how significantly in this case here, come down here almost disappear. 
and this is just four nights and uh, after that obviously the improvement kept happening and this inflammation that we see this is uh, partly related with pain but it's also the root cause for many chronic conditions now like hypertension diabetes cancer so chronic inflammation is a parameter which is like an early sign of these many people are hypothesizing and there are tests like c reactive protein etc which can also help us figure this out so this is another big uh, contributor uh, that has been found contribution from earthing just sleeping or get, getting connected to the earth potential in most of these cases as you can see this is sleeping so it's not really sleeping on the earth but it's actually on earth's bed which is through either a mat at the feet sometimes now there are earthing sheets earthing pillow covers etc that has started coming then the third one uh, which is again very interesting is around the viscosity and clumping in blood right uh, so this uh, this is here pictures microscopic pictures of that so on the left you see before earthing on the right you see after earthing so you can just see these are different cells each of these how here they are clumped together and they become big so they flow less smoothly viscosity is this rate or the resistance uh, that is there in the flow so on the right in each of these three cases you can see how the each cell is very separated out and this enables a smoother flow of blood the blood flows much more easily much more smoothly across the system right so that's why elevated blood viscosity or resistance in the blood to flow has been found as an or root cause of many many cardiovascular diseases because it results in uh, lesser smooth work flow uh, blood flow and this is again after 2 hours of earthing for about 10 subjects uh, where this was seen consistently so these three papers i have shown there are many more uh, but these are some all of these as you can see are highlighting things which are root cause of other pathologies that we see cardiovascular disease hypertension uh, diabetes um other stress born diseases and similarly there are many other studies which have shown improvements uh in these parameters like sleep uh, pain reduction inflammation reduction like we saw clumping of red blood cells or blood viscosity reduction relaxation and this will see a lot more detail autonomic nervous system what that means accelerated healing of injuries so this is another very interesting uh cases that they have found where the healing gets faster if there is a cut or a bruise and you heal uh, earth that part then the healing happens much faster or old uh, wounds that have not been healed uh, start getting healed and increase heart rate variability so these are some of the various aspects uh, medical dimensions uh, parameters that have been found to be improved uh, from just this simple practice of earthing of being in contact with directly in contact with earth uh, so now let's see how this happens right what part of our system because here we can see it's so many different things right so we saw that it regulates cortisol it reduces inflammation reduces blood viscosity so what is really happening because it's influencing so many things so let's try and understand what part of our system does this we heal now before we go into the specifics i thought i'll give a very short introduction to the anatomy and to the different parts for people who are not aware of this so we know we have cells in our body now these cells aggregate themselves as what are known as tissues and these tissues aggregate in what are known as organs uh, and these organs come together organize themselves as systems in our body that's how at least modern science uh, tries to see uh, or organizes the our biology uh, completely from a single cell we get to be create tissues from tissues to organs and to organs to system so as an example if i have a muscle cell uh, then that muscle cells come together and make like a tissue a muscle tissue uh, and that comes together as an organ like a muscle organ you can say and the whole musculoskeletal system becomes like a full fledged system where the muscles are interconnected then it also has other tissues uh, in the system like it will have tendons it will have bones and then together they make the musculoskeletal system now we organize our body in these uh, systems uh, which are the immune system the digestive system cardiovascular system integumentary system this is about our skin primarily uh, that's the integumentary system respiratory system endocrine system this is where hormones are secreted from our glands 
reproductive system, excretory system, which is the urinary system, largely, and the musculoskeletal system, which is our bones and muscles. And last but not the least is our nervous system. So we'll go a little more deeper in the nervous system today because that's what finally gets affected uh, with earthing. So the nervous system, uh, as we know, what is the nervous system? Nervous system is spread across our body. It is like the controller. It's the signaling system. It gives commands to our brain and the spinal cord, right? which is marked in orange here. This is known as the central nervous system. These two components, they are central because every piece of information from all our periphery, from all our senses, our hands to the tip of our toes, tip of our fingers, uh, our eyes, our ears, the message, whatever we receive goes to our through our spinal cord, our brain which processes this and then sends out information on what action to take. So for example, if I suddenly move my hand and touch a hot object, that message will go from my finger here, the sensor to my spinal cord. And in this case, from a spinal cord itself, the reflex will come where I, the motion to move that hand, right? So this happens uh, through this combination where the messages go and then I the back message goes to remove it. So. Uh, but that's where it happens to the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. Then what we see in blue here, which is the nerves, right? Like I was saying, across our entire body is known as the peripheral nervous system. And that goes to our skin, limbs, organs, etc. To every nook and corner of our body, uh, through our muscles, also to our internal organs, like our heart, our lungs, our digestive system. They also get commands, the muscles of that to how will uh, how much to move uh, comes to the nervous system as well and that's part of the peripheral nervous system so peripheral nervous system have typically two kinds of uh, areas uh, and we'll see that uh, a little bit so this is broadly the two branches the central and the peripheral nervous system central is the brain and spinal cord peripheral is what's across the body now let's look at the peripheral nervous system a little bit more in detail so peripheral nervous system has two components. One is the sense organs or sensory nerves. This is our eyes, our ears, our skin, which is across our body, our nose, the tongue, and the internal uh, or interception system. So eyes, ears, skin. Skin has pressure sensors, uh, detection there. Nose and tongue, these five we know. The internal is basically uh, nerves which are there in our muscles, in our bones, which tell us where our hand is. Right? So for our entire body, so for example, if you just close your eyes right now and you extend your arm, you know roughly the angle, say your shoulder is making here with your torso. right? And you know what is the angle your elbow is making here. Even with your eyes closed, you don't have to see. It. That is happening because there is this internal sensing that's happening. There are these sensory nerves which come from our bones, our muscles, and that tell us, give us this picture in our mind. It creates that image in our brain of what are the angles that are there. Where are my different organs? Where are my different body parts? Where are my different joints uh, that are there? So that's the sense part. The other part of the peripheral nervous system equally is the muscles part, right? Which is the motor nerves. So when a message comes from the brain to move my hand, then a lot of muscles are getting activated for me to be able to move my hand. And that happens through what are known as these motor nerves or the muscle-based systems. Now, the, there are three kinds of muscles in our body, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles are the ones which work for our heart. Uh, they make the heart beat. They are slightly different, and that's why they are categorized separately. Smooth muscles are typically muscles which are connected to the various organs like our stomach, our kidney, our uh, lungs. And these are smooth muscles. And uh, they work differently, uh, slightly. And uh, that's why they are known as smooth muscle. And lastly is the skeletal muscles. The skeletal muscles are what are there connected to our bones, which make our bones, our limbs uh, move, our torso move. They are the skeletal muscles. They are striped typically and the smooth ones are it. Uh, but that's one way of distinguishing them. Now, amongst the muscles, there are again two kinds of, two categories. One is the somatic nervous system and the autonomous nervous system. So the somatic nervous system is what is for the voluntary or musculoskeletal part. So I voluntarily move my hand, right? That's what is known as the somatic nervous system. 
so the muscles which are involved in this my arm muscles my leg muscles shoulder muscles etc that we typically see in a skeleton which is the outward side mostly those are the somatic nervous system they are in our voluntary control autonomous nervous system are the nerves that control the involuntary uh, movements or the background organs like we don't know uh, how when how our digestion happens right we are not aware of it but again commands are going to the muscles in the body to the muscles in the stomach in the abdomen to do contraction etc so that we can digest food it doesn't just happen automatically like the command is going how much acid to re uh, release in our stomach for digestion process to start how should our peristalsis movement the movement of our uh, intestines be for digestion for example same is breathing breathing is actually one of those things which are on both sides to uh, to that extent right typically we don't know uh, how we are when we are breathing how we are breathing it just happens right our lungs are moving breathing happens we are not aware but we also uh, it's also on the left that we have the way to control it so this is a very peculiar typical uh, process very different very unique uh, process which is both involuntary and voluntary but this is the one which is controlled by the autonomous nervous system so so to summarize we have the central nervous system which is the brain and spinal cord and then we have the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system has sensory part which is the in and the motor part muscle part which is the out our action so in we receive signal out we do the action in the world action in the world happens in two forms the somatic nervous system which is voluntary actions where we decide consciously what to do and the autonomous or the involuntary side. okay now let's look at the we are we are again very familiar with the somatic but let's see what the autonomous nervous system is let's go a little deeper so autonomous nervous system also has two branches which are known as the parasympathetic and the sympathetic right so what is this is where we come to our uh, fight and flight so what is parasympathetic nerves this is what controls our rest and digest as it's known as or rest and uh, uh, repair and sympathetic is the fight or flight so what does this really mean right so these are a couple of uh, these are nerves which are going around our brain and spinal cord and connect our very important organs across our entire body if you imagine right right from our eyelids pupils saliva the lungs the heart rate uh, the stomach digestion liver the intestines our bladder and our genital organs so it's going right across our spinal cord connecting various these parts now their functions are very complementary as you can see the sympathetic what it does it this was designed primarily this system was designed primarily for our uh, safety right so this is part of our evolution when the environment say going back to where we evolved like a jungle where there were a lot of threats now if there is a threat perception what has to happen i i need to either fight that threat out or i need to run away from that threat. and that's why this is known as the fight or flight response now this what happens with this fight or flight now to fight or flight i need all of these things that are written on the right hand side right my i my senses have to be on hyper alert i need to be really able to see uh, everything very clearly hear everything very clearly my breathing has to be very fast because i need to get more oxygen my airways have to be very fast my heart has to be beating very hard so that it can pump blood to every corner now during as this is happening right my limbs have to move very fast again right so that i can fight or flight they need energy so sugar has to be released so liver does that but at the same time all the energy that was going in my digestion process which is my stomach my intestines that has to reduce as well so that all the energy extra energy that is taking away from here goes in the fight or flight response which is increasing my heart rate increasing my breathing increasing my uh, sugar production let that blood flow to all the parts of the body so that's what the sympathetic nervous system does it basically will activate all of these uh, processes it will increase my heart rate it will increase my uh, lung breathing it will increase sugar levels blood flow dilate my pupils etc now once the threat is gone imagine that right that fight or flight i don't need flight or flight now i know it is safe again i have reached the place where there is safety there is no predator there is no risk then 
the parasympathetic uh, process uh, the nervous system starts sending its signal what that does is it will reduce the heart rate it will reduce the breathing it will reduce the sugar levels first right all those start happening and then it starts giving back the energy the flow to the digestion system to the immune system right so uh, where now my digestion is happening properly with the stomach with the intestine my bladder is getting contracted so i can actually excrete and my immune system also starts getting properly function so these two you can see as one is an accelerator and the other is like a brake right and they keep working in tandem so whenever we need so in a typical day if nothing is happening what we call as tone it will move something like this between the sympathetic and parasympathetic so sometimes we will be active sometimes we will relax active relax through those cycles as we eat food the parasympathetic activates and that's why we don't feel like doing much activity then the sympathetic is less but after some time again the sympathetic comes into play and we start doing our work so typically this is the smooth flow that has to happen between those two systems yeah and all of this happens automatically it's autonomous we don't do it consciously this is when our brain our spinal cord will even detect threat it will basically trigger the response of the sympathetic and when it starts feeling safe it will trigger the parasympathetic and reduce the symptoms so this happens autonomously this is based you can almost see that these are hardwired circuits in our body these are hardwired these are there as part of our evolution uh, this is there for our own safety for our own protection uh, that they exist so to to summarize what is happening in sympathetic the heart rate goes up the blood pressure goes up the blood sugar goes up and our pupils our senses are alert dilated pupils they are more alert in parasympathetic it increases the digestive process it increases the immune response right and you can see that as i saying i'm saying that again that this is based on how the body perceives it how the nervous system perceives it so initially most of our threats were basically physical we would see a predator we would see something which can threaten our life and that's why they had to be autonomous they had to really kick in fast but now a lot of times our threats are actually not physical they are more psychological but our physiology still works the same way and this one can say is kind of the origin at least in the yogic system this is believed as the origin of the stress bond diseases where stress is nothing but perceived threat at a persistent level where we continuously almost stay in this fight or flight response we stay as if there is threat we are seeing the world as being unsafe for us continuously and this is perceived safety is psychological safety not physical safety even sitting at my home i can feel that unsafety lack of safety and these are things like losing a job losing a loved one these are the fears that now bother us which are more psychological fears but remember our biology are has evolved to treat them the same it doesn't know the difference so it just gets into fight or flight and sometimes some of these fears persist persist for very long durations days months even years and that can result in very severe trauma it just results in the disruption of this smooth cycle of the sympathetic and parasympathetic we go we get stuck in this and the parasympathetic almost ends up taking a back seat the relaxation doesn't happen we never feel safe and once we don't feel safe then you can see how blood pressure blood diabetes these are just natural consequences of this condition which is known as a stress bond disease so stress can be if stress is defined so scientifically there has been not been a very clear definition of stress but we use the term stress bond diseases quite often so uh, this stress very uh, uh, very simply can be defined as this how the system is if it's continuously in parasympathetic or sympathetic so it where it loses this fluidity this regular flow that's there in the system okay. so that's the sympathetic and parasympathetic in short now uh, of course this is a very detailed topic and you can find many many uh, videos on this which go in detail uh, on youtube and other things the other thing before i move on i want to highlight is that 
typically this the location of the sympathetic is in our right hemisphere of our brain our brain as we know has two hemisphere the right side is more connected with the sympathetic activities and the left side is more connected with the parasympathetic and so that's the typical association anatomically of these two centers so with that quick overview uh, this is a more detailed version of what is happening as i say this is the parasympathetic and the sympathetic does the opposite now with that um, looking look at our nervous system a brief understanding now let let's see a, a more detailed uh, research study on what happens with prithvi what happens with arthing so this was a, a study this is a very uh, detailed uh, study uh, which was a control trial as a randomized control trial and i'll tell you what that means this was done in 2006 it published in the european biology and bioelectromagnetics uh, the effect of arthing on human physiology and uh, they tracked the eeg which is the electroencephalogram the signal of our brain Uh, the EMG electromyogram, which is the signals, electric signals, electromagnetic signals of our muscles. They use the the arm muscles for that. The blood volume, pulse, how much uh, blood is released in a pulse, and the heart rate. These were the four parameters they tracked in this study. And what they did was earthing and grounding. And how did they do that? This is a picture of that. Right. So they just connected these points. And these are also known as the kidney points in. Uh, In acute pressure, acupuncture, the meridians or the pranic points, seventy two thousand nadis. One of them is uh, here, which is what they connected through this switch, and this wire then was put in the earth. Now, in terms of method, why is it a, a control study, a randomized, uh, double blinded, in fact, control study? Uh, so they took thirty uh, people, control and twenty eight with intervention. So what does that mean? That total there were fifty eight people. now all of them were connected with this pin right like we saw on the previous slide the image that they were connected with a wire now 30 of them were sham grounded meaning that wire was not connected to the earth it was just there right while only 28 were actually connected with the ground so in this way they ensured uh, they ensured that these people did not know it was blinded the 30 people or the 20 did not know whether they were being earth or grounded or not so the placebo effect as it is known as that our mind will make this happen was taken out because everybody thought they were getting grounded at least or did not get grounded but they weren't told and this was randomized who would be the people who would be grounded or not then the overall protocol was that 28 people uh the 28 minutes first when they were grounded there was no intervention means the switch there was a switch which would connect people there was a time when that switch would flip and that circuit will get closed and it will get earth till that 21st 28 minutes the switch was on off so nobody was connected and then of the intervention people the switch was flipped and switch or switch was turned on and 28 minutes after that they did other thing this was to basically make sure just by connecting that uh, tab on the foot that uh, electrode on the foot whether there was some change so 28 minutes was given for it to stabilize and then after that another 28 minutes was seen uh, of that now uh, there was a, one electrode on the left and one on the right connected in terms of eeg this was based on an international reference now the data that was looked at was from 14 minutes before earthing and 14 minutes after earthing this is again to remove those extremities what what happens with that different scales were seen uh, these are the different wave patterns uh, the uh, frequencies beta alpha theta delta and their ratios uh, that are there in the mind uh, in the electric signal of our brain that were compared and different tests were done statistical tests to check whether that any difference was there and if there was difference whether it was significant statistically significant or not that means whether the difference was uh, just a random difference or it was only or the chances that it was primarily because of this earthing phenomena so that was done so let's see what the results were right so this is uh, the plot uh, of two one subject two subject four so let's see the red Uh, indicates the left wave uh, from the left hemisphere blue is for the right 
and this is the point when earth switch earthing switch was turned on this is 14 minutes before 14 minutes after now when this switch was turned on you can see the left it suddenly changed this was the level it went here for this individual this is beta waves same with alpha it changed a little change here you can see in, in this this is for the uh, but you can also see that the right the blue didn't change much right and you see that for subject four also uh, right so similarly this is the right uh, brain and that remained at the same level but this was the left before it came here so it just changed the, the there was an order of magnitude shift in the left but no change in the right and the other thing we note here is that for this individual subject for example the change was up it went from down to up for this individual it came from up to down in the left so the change was bidirectional some cases it went from low to up and the other cases it went from up to down and it happened only in the left there was no difference in the right and when they looked at this detailed data for all the subjects that were there this is what they found that for example six beta up six beta down almost equal for five subjects alpha went up for seven it went down four theta went up six for theta came down delta for five it went up for three it came down right so it was almost change was both ways one and it was only in the left on the right there was no change and this was borne out in the data as well so they found that when we just looked at the uh, change then there wasn't significant statistically significant different difference in the left hemisphere but when they looked at the rms which is the square of the difference root means square then there was a difference so what that means is almost half the people it went down half the people it came down so it evened out in some way so average there was no change if we look at it just at as plus and minus but if we square this difference we say the absolute difference then there was a statistically significant difference that means there was Earthing did have a statistically significant impact on the EEG of the left hemisphere in terms of the change, in terms of the absolute change. And that change was bidirectional, that it happened in both directions. So you can see how small the t-test probabilities are. Now let's look at similarly what happened with the muscles, right? They connected again both the left and right. Here, again, they found an immediate change. But this time, as you can see, change happened in both the right, here you are seeing, and the left. So here are some of these participants, it went up. These are all the participants together. And here in one participant, it came down, in others it went up. So in both left and right, it was the change happened. But again, the change was bidirectional. As you can see here, for some it was coming down, some it was going up. So the change was bidirectional for all these 22 participants. but it was there in both left and right. That is the difference, right? And so again, the same thing was found that the difference was in the RMS and it was not in the uh, difference. It was only in RMS. T tests were left, left and right. RMS showed absolute uh, uh, difference, statistically significant difference and not in absolute differences. So to summarize between the two, this was similar, that the, Im the impact was immediate. We saw that as the switch flipped, immediately that change happened. It was abrupt, within one second, very quick. And that happened in both EEG and EMG, right? In the EEG, the change was only in the left hemisphere, not in the right. In EMG, it was both. Both sides were impacted. In EEG, we saw that the there was increase in sum and decrease in sum. Right, And so the average wasn't statistically different, which was what we saw in EMG also, in the muscles also, brain and the muscle. And But we saw that there was a statistically significant change in the absolute change in the RMS. So in the RMS, the root mean square, there is a change, not in a directional. The same thing happened with EMG. So both brain and muscles, they were affected instantaneously, similarly, but bidirectionally. The only difference was in the brain, there was only a difference in left, while in muscles, it was in the both, both the sides. And this is very interesting because this indicates to us 
that the change was affecting the parasympathetic. Remember, the left side was parasympathetic of our brain, right side was sympathetic. So earthing was helping us with the parasympathetic, the calmness, the relaxation. So it activates our rest and digest, our rest and repair part, the parasympathetic nervous system. It So if you're stuck here, it will bring us down. It helps us get more relaxed, more calm. And oftentimes, I think if you go out in nature, that's how many of us feel. That's what Prithvi does. It relaxes us. It connects us to our self. It relaxes us. Of course, they looked at other parameters. There was a statistically significant, again, increase in blood volume pulse. But this didn't happen immediately. It took time. This was interesting. This took time. So a pathological parameter, a biochemical parameter, uh, something which has to do with blood flows, that will take time. It won't happen instantaneous. But the nervous system changes instantaneous. And once that happens, the other changes will happen. And this is, if you remember, we saw that, that cortisol levels, that took a few days to normalize. Inflammation, that took some time and hours of earthing to regulate. But the nervous system happens immediately. There was no detectable impact on the heart rate. Remember, those were the four parameters. So to summarize the study, the impact of earthing was on electrophysiological parameters, which is the EEG, ECG, electrophysiological parameters. Its impact is immediate and abrupt. It happens within one second for the EEG and EMG. Our electrical parameters are electromagnetic field, which is sometimes also often known as the aura gets immediately impacted. The change on the EEG in our brain is only on the left side, not right side. In the muscles, it's on both sides, which means it's more likely impacting our parasympathetic nervous system. It's bi-directional change is happening both again in EEG and EEG, which means for some it's increasing, some it's decreasing. So to me, this means it's really equilibrating. It's calibrating our system. For somebody, the if... So there is something known as muscle tone. So sometimes the muscles might be over contracted, tense, then it relaxes it. For some, this might be too relaxed and then it tightens it up, contracts it. That's why the change is bi-directional. It can go this way or that way. It sort of brings us to our normal self, our best self. That is the current version. That's to me, that's the way I understand this data that this is bi-directional. For somebody where this is very high, it will bring it low. Where it is very low, it will bring it high. And that's the case with all our parameters, right? If you see our blood parameters, if you see a lab report, we always see a range between this and this. High is also not good, low is also not good. We, want, we operate in this middle region, the middle path. And that's what our thing is done. It's whatever is high, it will bring it to normal. Whatever is gone low, it will bring it to normal. So it's basically helping us reach our own equilibrium. That's the uh, role of earth. We also saw an increase in blood volume pulse, uh, which was there compared to uh, this, but this did not happen immediately. So it takes time for other parameters to start changing. Okay. So let's summarize. This, this sort of is bringing me towards the end of our talk. So let's summarize what we have seen till now. Uh, we saw that Prithvi heals. And this is where I think yoga meets science. And we saw that with data with research studies, what we have known for thousands of years now getting validated, right? And we see that it heals through two processes. We can do it. Now it comes practically, how do we do it? So one, just walking barefoot on soil, on grass, sand, water, like an ocean, but not tiled floors at our homes. That doesn't help because our homes are, our floors are made up of insulated material. So they do not help. Walking on, on the floor has its own different advantage, walking barefoot, but it doesn't help us get earth in this way. We can alternatively do it through what are known as these grounding mats. They are easily available. Uh, you can order them online. Uh, what this connects is with the grounding pin. Now, as we do this, it's very important. You test that earthing point. Unfortunately, at least in India, I know not all earthing happens Properly, the buildings are not. Sometimes there are older buildings where this has gone faulty. There are very simple devices, again, that you can get online, uh, which test that. 
that whether the earthing is correct or not. It comes as a like a plug. You plug in and it gives three LEDs and it will tell you whether that is correct or not. If earthing is correct or not. And you and that legend is also very easily there. So making sure that is there. The other thing that you can ensure is if you have the proper circuit breaker. An RCCB circuit breaker is what is needed. That uh, if there is any mishap, it will immediately break the circuit so that the um, the electrocution can stop immediately. But those risks are not there. This has been happening now for quite a while. Uh, I have been using it myself personally for now almost over a year regularly. So the question now comes how to use it. So the, the best places to make contact with is the sole of our feet and the palms of our hand. Even if you look at them, the skin here at our palm, at our sole is fundamentally different than the skin anywhere else. These are really, I think, our receptors uh, to the external field, also our transmitters like antennas. This is where in the pranic literature, the nadis, as well as uh, in the acupuncture literature, these are where all the meridians are there, the ends are here. right? So all our energy channels, all the channels where electrons can actually flow uh, are actually here or the current can flow that is here. And so... These two are the best points. Of course, the rest of the skin will also work. The more points we touch is better. But I think these two will be the most effective when our sole of our feet or the palms of our hands. So even if you're sitting on grass with our palms in contact, that will also work even if our feet are not able to be in contact. But as you can see, even while sitting, by folding our legs in this way, as you see in that image, you can have your, or your sole of your feet connected. So people who are bedridden, they can do this very easily. It works in many, many conditions. And uh, we've seen so many cases uh, at our clinics, uh, in our practice, in my practice, I've seen now so many people who have benefited from this very simple uh, technique. Now, what do you have to do? How long it has to be done for? What we have found minimum, I would say minimum is 30 minutes a day, twice a day. So morning, evening, minimum. If we can do this minimum, that will start having an effect in our biology, in our physiology. As we saw, the effect is instantaneous on our nervous system. But our nervous system, it needs to be persisted. That change needs to be persisted for long for the pathology to start changing. Things like cortisol levels to start changing. Things like our heart rate, our blood pressure, those things to start changing. It needs longer duration. So 30 minutes is minimum twice a day, I would suggest minimum there is no maximum it is like how can there be a maximum to be connected to the earth so for example i have a grounding mat under my table uh, so whenever i'm sitting working like even now as i'm giving this uh, talk my feet are earth because that earthing mat is connected to the point and i'm sitting bare feet with bare feet bare on that right so and this happens for most hours of my day you can have one mat at your office at your home so that can happen continuously. And there are people who have done that for a long time and there has been obviously no adverse effects. This is, I think, one truly one thing where there is just no side effect uh, per se. It can be, you can do it as long uh, as, you, as you want to. So this is something which has both uh, evidence, I can say, definitely say in my own practice, I have seen that as a clinician working with various patients uh, we run clinics uh, in Mumbai. We run 14 clinics where patients are there. There we have seen a difference. And of course, in our families um, we have, who have used it, they have seen very closely monitored. You can say people, my mother, for example, we have seen this benefit happen. So I would urge all to see as much as they can use this uh, as a tool for their own well-being, for the well-being of all. So to summarize, we saw these Four parts, healing with Prithvi. Uh, the process is earthing, which is to connect with the electric potential of the earth. It has benefits on various diseases, pathologies. We saw only three studies of regulating cortisol levels, reducing inflammation, reducing blood viscosity. All of these three are indicators of much larger health problems, uh, the most common chronic diseases that we are seeing today. So anything that impacts this will impact those as well. So it works on broadly many, many health conditions, uh, you can say. Uh, it heals our nervous system. More specifically, it heals our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest and repair system, our rest and digest system. 
right? It, imp it will improve digestion, definitely it will improve our immune system uh, if it works on our parasympathetic system. And we saw this through very hard scientific evidence and we've seen uh, it in, in my practice, I have seen it quite significantly with my patients. So please do it to summarize again, do it 30 minutes minimum, at least twice a day. So one hour, do it twice. It's better than doing it one hour continuous. If you can do it twice, it's much better because it will keep recalibrating. Uh, and you can do it in either through directly on ground, on, on earth, on soil, or you could do it through by getting a grounding mat. Both work. So that's the summary. Thank you so much for your time. Before we close, we'll close with a prayer again. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Akashchitukh Bhavave Om Shanti 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 <clears throat> Thank you for your time. This is our website. Be healthy, be joyful, swastraho, anandithraho. Thank you.